Um, yeah, today um, I would like to talk about the security application of the Spark language and especially um, about the workstation we are building at Secunet, a secure workstation. Um, and I will tell you about how one can design um, any, uh, a workstation and a complex system in general to enable the, the, the verification of, of such a system in, in a high assurance context. Um, so, the company introduction. Secunet, um, or Secunet uh, Security Networks AG, uh, as the full name is, is one of Germany's uh, leading providers of IT security. We are um, a security partner of the uh, German government. Um, and our major shareholder is Giesecke and Devriant, uh, um, a very large manufacturer of, of, of smart cards, for example, located in Munich. We currently have around about 270 employees. Um, and uh, there are four business units. So uh, also the security business of Secunet is, is pretty diverse. We have automotive security, um, business security, government, governmental security, and then high security. And this is the business unit where this project is, is being done and uh, where, where, we are, where we are located. Um, more details about the company can be found at uh, our website. Some words to the high security business unit. Um, we have and, and always uh, had a close cooperation with the German Federal Office of Information Security, the BSI. Um, and together with, uh, with that office, we developed the Xena uh, architecture, the secure internetworking architecture. Um, and this is, for example, uh, used to secure the traffic of all German embassies across, uh, all across over the world. Um, and it enables the secure processing as well as storage and transmission of, of classified uh, information. And in general, every kind of sensitive information. And within that business unit, we have a project that is called the multi-level workstation, um, of which I'm the project manager. And this aims to, to lay the grounds for the next generation of Xena. Um, so this is currently in a research uh, and development phase. And we have a strong focus on the multi-level capabilities uh, that means not only secure one single classification, but handle multiple classification in one system. And of course, to increase the trustworthiness and security uh, of the architecture in general. Um, this slide um, aims to motivate you or to, um, uh, to clarify what, what I mean when I talk about cl uh, classified information. Uh, this is cited from a NATO um, di directive, uh, and this document defines what uh, security classifications, how, how security classifications are defined. Um, similar documents exist in, in, in almost every nation. Um, I usually prefer to, um, to use the German counterpart as uh, as it's somewhat more scary to the audience, usually it talks about being the, the existence of the, um, of the fertile, uh, of, of Germany at, at risk if, if top secret information uh, gets known to unauthorized parties. But I think this, this uh, document also served its purpose. So if you see, for example, cosmic top secret, uh, the unauthorized disclosure would result in exceptionally grave damage to the NATO. And for NATO secret, this still is grave damage to the NATO and so on. These are the classifications that are commonly used. And what I wanted to point out is um, just that if you build an information uh, system that handles classified information, then you have to do, be careful to handle this information accordingly and um, to, uh, that you have to be concerned about uh, a high assurance 
of, of security properties. Um, coming back to the multi-level workstation, we get some additional problems if we want to handle multiple classifications of, or multiple pieces of cla classified information. Um, often, classified information is mission critical. That means if you, uh, if you are on a mission, you need access to, uh, to, classified, uh, to classified data and have, have different conflicting goals there. One of it is availability of, of that information. You need it exactly when, when you're trying to access it, access it, it has to be available. Uh, but as, as sensitive as, the, as such kind of information is, it also uh, is a problem of confidentiality, integrity. That means you do not want to, um, uh, to have your classified information released from that system and, and getting, getting access by unauthorized parties. And of course, you do not want to have critical information manipulated or deleted if you, uh, if you need it. And a third, uh, a third point is the sharing of classified information. If you um, consider um, some mission where different parties that all have their own classification and own classified information have to work together, but nonetheless have to share certain pieces of information, and all this has to be done um, in, a, in an information system, then we have to take measures that those information do not mix up, that those information uh, do not leak out, and, and such kind of things. So this is the third major challenge in multi-level security. Um, and we think that a trustworthy multi-level workstation is one, one piece of the puzzle, one part of the solution uh, to these challenges you have with your classified information. Um, the workstation we are trying to build um, shall give the user concurrent access to information with different classifications, of course, um, and enables him to store and transmit information securely over unsecure networks. Um, there must, of course, be some user interface that is uh, suitable to handle different classification uh, at the same time. Um, and, of course, there must be something that, that is expected from a workstation, such things like access control and authentication of the user. You want to make sure that only um, authenticated and trustworthy users are able to access classified information. Um, and, of course, the, the final goal is to integrate all this into one single system. What could the use case of such a multi-level workstation be? This is, though pretty abstract, this should make clear what, what we're trying to build. Um, we have, well, originally this was yellow and this, this was red. Um, we have different uh, classified information, yellow, blue, and red. Th these are networks, all these clouds are networks, and in between uh, there's some large untrusted network which may be the internet. That means uh, we want to um, access from, from our workstations, this is the yellow one, this is the red one, information in those classified networks. So, firstly, we have to ensure the, um, the secure transmission of information through the untrusted network. And usually we denote this by these black and colored boxes, which um, secures information by means of cryptography, by integrity protection and encryption, and can, uh, then uh, make it secure to, to send those encrypted integrity protected information over some untrusted network. And then there would be some counterpart to that box at, uh, at an entry of, of, the, of the yellow network, for example, which does the, uh, does the encryption and integrity checking and of, of the information. So with, with that scenario, um, the red party can access the red network securely and the yellow party can access the yellow network uh, securely too. What if they, for example, had to share blue information. Um, in such a multi-level workstation, we uh, had to add some, some similar component 
that does the protection of, um, of blue information, uh, enables it to send it over the uh, untrusted network securely and then um, the, uh, the operation of checking and, and, and decrypting um, the, the, the information has to be done at, at the entry of the blue network too. Um, and another point that arises if we want to handle different classifications on those workstations now is the, um, is the user interface part. So um, this uh, should denote the fact that we, by some means, need to separate um, different information securely. So at each time, uh, each, each point of time, the user has to be able to distinguish uh, different information, different classifications securely. So this is the general concept of, of what we are trying to build. Of course, um, the classical security requirements have to be taken into consideration, which is confidentiality, that the access to classified information by unauthorized parties is, uh, is to be prevented. Integrity, no one uh, may be able to alter or delete classified information and availability um, that only authorized parties can access confidential information. Um, in a multi-level workstation, we have different challenges with, with these security requirements. Um, I, I pointed, some of them I already pointed out, the, the information must be protected before leaving the um, a security domain. Different classifications must not mix and we, the user must be able to dis, uh, distinguish different classification. The question now is, um, if we consider a classical monolithic system, um, can we really trust such kind of system like Windows or Linux, which have several millions of, line, of lines of code to, to do that for, for such kind of critical information? And um, the second question is, how can we build um, a trustworthy uh, multi-level workstation uh, cost-effectively? Um, so, um, we, I will present uh, for a strategy which, which consists of four parts, how we uh, are solving these problems. One of them is the multi-independent levels of security, the MILS architecture. Um, uh, the other thing is to minimize the trusted computing base. We also are reusing legacy software in, as untrusted parts of the system. And um, last but not least, we have strategies to implement the critical components which have to be trusted in a secure way. Okay, first part of our strategy is multiple independent levels of security. Mills. It's emerging system, an emerging system architecture for high assurance systems, not only security systems. And uh, conceptual foundations um, are pretty old. Uh, one is in the, in the so-called Anderson report, and the other is in the, is in the paper by John Rushby, which, which describes the separation, the so-called separation kernel. And, this architecture is based on a, on a reference monitor, which has four properties. Um, firstly, it's non-bypassable. Um, that means that all security critical applications always invoke the reference monitor, and everything that's security critical is checked in advance and denied if, if it violates a security policy. It has to be evaluatable. That means uh, we have to have a way that enables us to, uh, to, to make sure that this reference monitor fulfills its purpose. It's always invoked. Uh, so every access um, that is done, that is security critical, is done through the reference monitor and it is tamper proof. That means no one can, can do anything that, um, that will change the behavior, that, that behavior of the reference monitor. So this is sometimes referred to as the need property. 